Guys, check this out. Mimi Hijab himself just condemned his own prophet, Muhammad. First and foremost, I'll say, yes, we condemn any woman, child, or whatever it may be that's being killed who's Jewish and who's not a non-combatant. So Mimi Hijab says here that if you do not take precautions to not kill women and children and other non-combatants when you are bombing or taking out another city, then you shall be condemned. I fully agree with that Mimi Hijab and I'm so happy you're finally condemning your warmongering Prophet Muhammad. So in this Sahih Hadith, Sahih Muslim, the followers of Muhammad come to him and say that we have killed the children of the polytheists during these night raids. For context, these night raids are literally just the followers of the Prophet going into neighboring villages and stealing everything they have. When we pull up, give me the load. Give me the load. So after one of the followers felt remorse for killing children of the polytheists, Muhammad responds to them and says, it's basically fine because they are from them. So now as you can see, Mimi Hinjab himself just condemned Prophet Muhammad for not taking precautions to not end the life of children during his night raids. So it's clear that the Prophet himself doesn't even condemn the collateral damage that results in the death of children. This means Mimi Hijab is more moral than his own prophet that he proclaims is the most moral. You're finished. You're finished. You're finished. You're finished. Wallahi, you're finished. Wallahi, you're finished. Like, did Bud not read the title of this chapter? Permissibility of unaliving women and children in night raids so long as it is not done deliberately. Like, you literally circled the answer and you still didn't notice? Keep in mind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, didn't have access to precision-guided missile technology, and sometimes you have to preemptively strike your enemy in battle. Now, if this is happening at night, understandably, it would make sense that unintentionally unaliving a woman and children could happen. But what do we know for sure from the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him? A woman was found unalived in one of these battles, so the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade the unaliving of women and children. Oh, Ramzi, you never fail to amuse me. <laughs> You're so thick, and every single other Muslim content creator that has responded with that exact same point is also thick. And that's why I never respond to these videos, because they're all thick. And I'll explain why. So first off, the premise of my video is that Mohammed Hijab condemns his own prophet for collateral damage. It's irrelevant that, oh, it says not deliberately, because Mohammed Hijab himself says that he condemns Hamas. We're not talking about Israel. None of you guys watch the Ben Shapiro um, in Mohammed Hijab debate clearly, because that clip is from that debate. And he says that I condemn Hamas for killing any non-combatant Jew or woman or children. He condemns any Jewish child or woman killed who is a non-combatant. He says he condemns that. So, both you, Ramzi, and Mohammed Hijab think that Hamas did not target Jewish civilians. Therefore, when Mohammed Hijab says that I, Mohammed Hijab, condemns Hamas for killing Jewish women who are non-combatants, he is literally condemning your God and your prophet. But you're too thick to understand that. Like, oh, I'm sorry for getting angry there. But like I was saying... I'll repeat it again because I know you guys lack comprehension skills in the brain. Muhammad Hijab says that Hamas didn't target any civilians. So that means that Hamas undeliberately or non-deliberately killed Jewish civilians. Muhammad Hijab says that he condemns that. The false prophet Muhammad says that that's okay. So therefore, Muhammad Hijab condemned his own prophet. Do I got to repeat it a third time? This is what I mean when I say that Dawah is quite literally just saying, nah, uh and then repeating what I said. So he says the permissibility is so long that it's not done deliberately, LOL, killing, blah, 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 blah. What I said, Mimi Hijab condemns all killing of non-combatants. He was quite literally condemning collateral damage. But Muhammad himself says that it's fine to kill in collateral damage so long that you do not target women and children. If they are killed in collateral damage, it is fine. Therefore, Mimi Hijab, who is quite literally defending, I mean, who quite literally was condemning both sides, both sides of this war over dirt for collateral damage, would be condemning Muhammad for collateral damage as Mimi Hijab. 
red jab says collateral damage bad any collateral damage that kills any non-combatants is bad muhammad says collateral damage is fine so mimi hijab condemned muhammad that's literally the premise of my video therefore it still stands you guys are yapping so he says that the video of momo hijab it was condemning the deliberate killing of women and children by israel lol not accidental bro watch the full clip watch that full clip it's on his youtube he is condemning hamas for accidentally killing that's what he says. He's asked, do you condemn Hamas for killing women and children? And then he says, yes, I condemn any killing of women, children, non-combatant who are Jewish. That's literally what he says. And then he goes on later to say Hamas only accidentally killed. This is this is gold. You just you are literally just saying anything to sound right and debunk me and refute me. This is Dawa. It's just saying things confidently and then making sure that your fans or your followers don't catch on to you blatantly being wrong because you're saying it with your chest out all oh, oh, oh you see that's literally Dawa. It's all just it's just talk. These TikTok Alganists aren't all there in the head. They're not. They're not all there. Like, you're just... Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Before you comment on my videos or my stories, go look at the full video of Mimi Hijab literally saying, I condemn any non-combatant who is Jewish in his stupid voice that he says that was killed by Hamas. That's literally what he says. And he later says Hamas didn't target... Hamas didn't target... If the trajectory continued, he says that Hamas didn't target any civilians. Now let's go and talk about this situation. First and foremost, I'll say, yes, we condemn any woman, child, or whatever it may be that's being killed, who's Jewish and who's not a non-combatant. But why is it the case, Ben? Huh? So... Guess what that means? If he didn't target them and he's condemning them for killing these non-combatants, guess what that means? Put two and two together. Actually, I can't trust you, Dal Gandis, to put two and two together. Because when you put one plus one plus one plus one plus one, that equals seven, right? No. To you, that equals one. Because one Quran, seven Kirat, what is that? Sorry, but that was off topic. <laughs> As I was saying, put two and two together there. If Mimi Hijab says that one Hamas, Hamas didn't target any civilians, and then two, he says that he condemns any killing of non-combatants who are Jewish, what does that what does that mean? But stop for a law. What does deliberately unaliving innocent women and children look like? You know the thing that you condemned? It looks like this. But slay both man and woman, infant and suckling. First, we should always understand when reading the Bible, we have to let scripture interpret scripture. You never look at a verse in a vacuum and try to determine what it's being said on its own, but rather look at the entirety of the passage and surrounding passages to help build a better understanding of what the scripture is trying to get across. To get a better grasp on what is trying to be said in 1 Samuel and other verses like that in the Old Testament, we first have to look at Exodus 23, verse 23 to 27. In verse 23, we see that the Lord says that he will wipe out all the inhabitants of the Levant. Then in verse 24, it says that you must demolish them and break their sacred stones to pieces. So just looking at verse 23 and 24, it appears as if the Lord Yahweh is commanding the Israelites to completely demolish and wipe out the natives of the Levant. So just based off of verse 23 and 24, it appears as if that the Lord Yahweh is commanding the Israelites to completely destroy and demolish and wipe out all of the natives of the Levant. But what is really being said by God is that he will drive them out of the land. The Lord and the writer of Exodus is using hyperbolic language here to describe the driving out of these natives of the Levant. We know that for a fact due to the fact that in verse 27, the Lord says that he will drive them out. He literally says that what he means by demolish and wipe them out is that he's driving them out of the land over the years. 
I will send my terror ahead of you, throw into confusion every nation you encounter. I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run. I will send the hornets ahead of you and drive the hit, I can't say those nations names, out of your way. But I will not drive them out in a single year because the land would become desolate and the wild animals too numbers for you. So here God literally says that when he says to wipe a nation out or to totally demolish them, destroy them, etc. He is saying to drive them out of that land. So clearly in the Old Testament, wipe out or any other verses along those lines would just be hyperbolic statements referring to driving them out of the nation for a more holier nation to be established. So in a verse like 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 3 when it says totally destroy and put to death, then that is a hyperbolic statement referring to driving them out of the land. This again is supported by the fact that the Amalekites are still around later on after this total destruction of their nation. And we know that they carried out this total destruction and God was pleased with this total destruction besides the fact that they spared the king. If God really wanted them to totally wipe out every single Amalekite, then God would have mentioned to Saul later on that he didn't fulfill all of what he commanded him to do. When Saul spares the king, Samuel and the Lord get upset with him. But if Saul didn't totally destroy every single Amalekite and put to death every woman, child, and man, then the Lord would have a lot more to be upset with him about, since the Amalekites are still a nation. If we look at later chapters in 1st and 2nd Samuels, we see that the Amalekites are still a nation and they still have people that are alive within that nation. Meaning that this command to totally destroy the Amalekites would most likely be referring to driving them out as a punishment for their wicked ways. Because if you drive them out of the nation, then they can regroup and establish a nation somewhere else or retake the land you drove them out of. But if you totally destroyed them and killed every last person that was an Amalekite, then they wouldn't be around anymore. Like they can't just respawn like a video game. And this is also supported by the fact that all ancient Mesopotamian civilizations use these hyperbolic statements when talking about their battle victories. There have been records found of enemies of Israel claiming to have completely wiped out Israel as a nation. Yet we know that couldn't have been the case. This kind of hyperbolic language is still present even to this day in things like sports, video games, and even still war. When someone says that the Toronto Maple Leafs got utterly slaughtered in the first round of the playoffs, they're not saying that anyone died. They're just saying the Maple Leafs didn't make it past the first round again. Or you know when you say that you destroyed your friend in a FIFA match? So now after looking at the biblical and historical context of these verses, it's pretty safe to say that genocide is not being promoted. Rather, it is a driving out of these people as a punishment for their wicked ways. All this explaining isn't going to stop the critics from quoting this verse out of context on a Christian's post to try to make it seem like the God of the Old Testament is evil. But remember, when you see God in the Old Testament commanding a group of people in Israel or the king of Israel to utterly destroy another nation, remember that it's most likely talking about driving them out of that land. God bless.